Hello and welcome. Welcome to today's tutorial on units and parts again. Well, when do we use units and parts? When do we use units? Think about it. If there is a relationship between the units, it tells you before and after, or in terms of ratio, that there's in certain pieces of information that tells you how the two ratios are connected, you can put all in terms of units. If not, you have to use units and parts. This is what I mean. Let's take a look at this question from 2014 Nanyang Primary Preliminary Paper 2, Question 17. The ratio of the number of 20 cent coins to the number of 50 cent coins in a box was 5 is to 3. 60 20 cent coins were taken out and exchanged for 50 cent coins of equal value. So the money was then put back into the box. The ratio of the number of 20 cent coins to the number of 50 cent coins became 1 is to 3. So how much money was there in the box? Again, this is a 5 marks question. Look tough? Looks tough? It is not. Remember what I said when you have faced with units and parts. You just make one of the variables the same, just like a science experiment. Because if one variable is the same and the rest, if one variable is different, the rest are all the same, you can attribute whatever changes or whatever different observations from our experiments due to that particular variable that is kept different. Right? The same logic. This is how you can see the interconnectivity of math to our daily problems. That is why math is so important because it allows you to think better. Okay? Let's take a look at this question. So, first thing first, as I always tell students, you must know that, all right, in, when, it's, when you see ratio, you must always see that, um, are they the same? Is there any pieces of information that you can connect? If not, leave them as units and parts. In this case, this is 5 is to 3, and this is 1 is to 3. Then you ask yourself, can they be in terms of units? 3 you, and then 3 you? No, cannot. Because we are told that 60, 50, 20 cent coins were taken and exchanged for 50 cent coins of equal value. So when you have an increase in the number of 50 cent coins, how can they be the same? So obviously, one is in, in terms of units and one is in terms of parts. Get it, get it clear? So it's definitely, don't get confused, don't put 5U, 3U, and then 1U and 3U, because it doesn't make sense. You have flawed all the rules of common understanding, logical deduction right so with that keep it as part so now 60 20 cent coins were taken out in exchange for 50 cents so how many coins were added how many 50 cent coins were added back to the box you have to ask before that before we do that we have to know how many or well, what is the value of the 60 20 cent coins easy 60 multiplied by 20 cent that gives you 12 dollars and so if $12, what is the number of 50 cent coins from $12? Of course, it's easy. How many groups of 50 cents do you have? So you just take 12 divided by 50, then you get 24. So it is as good as saying the change here is, all right, all right, is plus, oh, sorry. In terms of the 20 cent, you take away 60, and then you add 24, right? These two are act the actual number. So I don't want to call them units of parts because this is exactly the number 60, um, 20 cent coins and 24, 50 cent coins. So what's next? Simple as what I just said. I cannot have two variables different and then I have a difference in value here. Because whatever differences in a value must be attributed to one variable. Then how? You make the other variable the same. And in this case, I would always advise to keep the ending the same. How do I get one part? 5u minus 60 give me one part. So 3u plus 24 give me three parts. So to make them the same, look at the number 1 and 3. What do I have? What is the lowest common multiple? That is 3 itself. See that? So if this is one group, I want three groups of them. How do I make it? Multiply by three, multiply by three, and that's how you get three parts. All right. So from the twenty cent coins, we have one expressions 
we have 1 part is equal to 5u minus 60, 3 parts will be, that's what I said, they are in groups, so you multiply by 3 throughout, times 3, times 3, and that you get 15u minus 180. Alright, that's how you solve that, then you will ask, you will ask oh, how am I going to solve it? It's easy, the answer is right in front of you. Let's see how we can draw, use model to help us um, do away with all the minus, the negative sign, the positive sign, and you know, all these things. I'll show you in model how it can actually be depleted. Three parts, because they are both the same. But I have two ways to express it. One is uh, 15u, I take away 180, and that's left with three parts. The other expression is then, oh, the same three parts, but I have 3u plus 24. Can you see? Can you see now? Can you see that from point to point here is 15? Okay, from point to point is 15. Then from point to point here is just 3. So what does it mean? Isn't it your 15 minus 3, 12u is equivalent to 24 plus 18, 180? Do you see that? So it is as good as saying 15u minus 3u will give you 180 plus 24. Right? So, in expression, this is how we will do it. 15u minus 180, number sentence. So, what is your 12u? Okay, add it up. 204. And if you are able to solve 1u, which is equal to 17, you know the total value of 20 cent, 50 cent, and ultimately your amount of money. Yeah, just now I should have paused because I want students to try it on your own. As simple as that, don't, that, don't, don't get confused with your units and parts. Once you know that and think of your science experiment, whatever differences in value must be attributed to one variable, you know that you must keep the other the same. As I would always advise to keep the ending variable the same okay but remember you don't use 15u anymore you use 5u because this is what we assume we, if we assume the number of 20 cent coins to be equal we can solve but they were not equal remember that so that's it five marks questions it is as simple as that i hope that you will not be terrified of math because the bottom line of all these videos is to help students to gain confidence in math why students fail math is because they don't understand the very basic concepts. They don't understand fundamentals. And that's where I want to come in to bridge the gap, show you the fundamentals, the concept. And that's it. You will be able to score. Believe in yourself and you can do it. That's the end. Have a good day and practice. <laughs> Bye.